the visible and unmistakable signs of cutaneous leishmaniasis. In hyperendemic foci in Iran, 70 to 80 percent of people, mostly children, are disfigured like this. 1984 was a very significant year for leishmaniasis, with the special program for research and training in tropical disease, based at the headquarters of the World Health Organization in Switzerland, deciding that a vaccine development program was indeed viable. In Iran, a unique set of circumstances has combined to thrust the nation's scientists to the forefront of the search for a vaccine. So, what lies behind Iran's rise to prominence in leishmaniasis vaccine research? There are several major factors. First, history. Over 1,000 years ago, Avicenna, a Persian regarded as one of the world's greatest medical scholars, described the natural history of leishmaniasis. Iranians have been living with the disease on a day-to-day -day basis ever since. This factor cannot be underscored. It is a symptom of human nature that when we become ill, we seek knowledge of our illness and seek a cure. As Professor Nadim, who started working on leishmaniasis over 30 years ago and who is now one of Iran's and the world's leading experts, explains... I became interested to work on uh, leishmaniasis, cutaneous leishmaniasis, because even at that time everybody knew that this is a very important disease in Iran and I'm, I'm, I myself and practically all members of my family in Tehran, we had the experience of cutaneous leishmaniasis. The director of Iran's Center for Research and Training in Leprosy and Skin Disease, Dr. Dolati, confirms another advantage, Iran's experience with leishmanization. The habit of uh, leishmanization, meaning that to, to give a single lesion to a healthy uh, person in a uh, covered area uh, to be protected for later in the love has been done for many years in Iran, in Russia and other places. Iran had tremendous in-depth experience with leishmanization thanks to Professor Nadim's work. When the war between Iran and Iraq started, one of the risks the soldiers faced was cutaneous leishmaniasis. Steps were taken to reduce that threat. So, uh, we gathered in, uh, in the army to thought about it between me and Dr. Nadim and some other experts. Uh, we decided to leishmanize uh, the soldier three months before going to the front. The war provided a massive yet crude field trial of leishmanization, as Professor Nadim explains. In, in 1984, I went to Calgary to the International Congress of Tropical Medicine and malaria, and I reported about the leishmanization of s s s s something around 700,000 people. Nobody believed it. The mass leishmanization program gave Iranian scientists the unique opportunity of testing a killed experimental vaccine, using leishmanization rather than natural infection as the challenge. However, there were problems. This soldier's lesion had not healed properly even after 14 years, and when the war ceased, the leishmanization program stopped. But with TDR coordinating the global initiatives being pursued in the search for a vaccine, research work in Iran actually increased and broadened in scope. The Baha Institute for Research and Development carried out extensive immunogenicity and analytical tests, especially those concerned with early safety and efficacy studies. Observations of volunteers post-vaccination were important. Detailed case studies were compiled, monitored and maintained for future reference. Iran's scientific infrastructure, production facilities, and cadre of good scientists proved to be invaluable. Since the decision to try to develop a vaccine, Iranian scientists have played a pioneering role, making full use of existing facilities, resources, and human skills to facilitate the global search for a viable vaccine. Welcome, the original producer of Lishmanin, 
stopped production in the early 1980s. Here in the Pasteur Institute in Iran, scientists stepped in and began to produce a uniform, reliable leishmanin based on leishmaniasis major. TDR has adopted this leishmanin for all vaccine studies and as a reference reagent. The Razi Institute near Tehran has a worldwide reputation for production of vaccines for both livestock and humans and for producing anti-snake and scorpion venoms. The institute had existing facilities and expertise which quickly became harnessed in the production of a candidate vaccine. A seed lot has been established for preparation of vaccine batches. The institute is producing a vaccine based on the strain of L major first isolated by Professor Nadim, the same one used to leishmanize over two million people. The vaccine is produced using tried and tested manufacturing procedures and is strictly controlled for quality and efficacy, not only by the department which produces it, but also by a separate quality control laboratory that tests all the products produced by the institute. It's all well and good to produce a reliable vaccine candidate. It's also important to have the facilities ready for the downstream scale-up and mass production work as already exist here in the Razi Institute. But the main stumbling block in vaccine research is the coordination and testing of the vaccine in stringently monitored and regulated large-scale field trials. Fortunately, Iran's extensive and effective health system, coupled with a common and high level of community participation and support, allowed this to happen. Of necessity, vaccine trials had to involve children, those who had not been previously infected. In cities such as Isfahan and Bam, schools devoted themselves wholeheartedly to taking part in the trials. Tens of thousands of young girls and boys were screened. Most underwent Lishmanin skin testing before going on for vaccination. Vaccinators do not know exactly what they are injecting. An independent individual is called upon to secretly code the material in the vials which will be used for vaccination. The code is then sealed and not broken until the end of the trial. Children were checked two days after the initial Leishmanin injections. Lesions were again measured and general health checked. If they were found to have had no reaction, they received an injection of vaccine in the placebo-controlled trial. Phase one and two trials of a single dose are now completed. For some, the work is not pleasant, but the pain should be worth it. The results of the efficacy trial of a single injection should be known soon, and crucial safety, immunogenicity and efficacy trials with multiple doses are now well underway. Regardless of whether the vaccine works, hundreds of thousands of Iranian schoolchildren have already benefited. During screening, many were found to be suffering from a variety of diseases, most of which have been successfully treated. General perception of health in schools and homes was also boosted, with children themselves providing ample evidence of their increased awareness. Whatever the results of the vaccine trials, these children can look forward to a better future, as can children from other countries where the disease is a significant public health problem, for the challenge of finding a solution to the age-old problem of leishmaniasis in Iran is being taken up by more and more highly skilled and committed scientists. And others from around the world are following that lead.